And we also have the owners of the publishing company, Nick Maxwell, an owner. So you're very, very welcome for coming along this evening. I met Johnny recently for a coffee, and he actually paid for it, which was unusual, but he did. And he was supposed to get me a scone, and he said, not the roses, scones, but he didn't come back with anything else. But anyhow, I still had the tea and coffee with him. When I was with him, he was talking about a particular individual. And he spoke at length about this person. And he had nothing but utter praise and thanks. And he said, without this individual, the book would not be, have uh, gone to print. And that is a lady called Vanessa Fox O'Loughlin. And he wanted me to specifically mention that lady because this book would not be between two covers, he says, without her. Well, uh, so you shouldn't have said that, Jerry, because everyone would have taught you this here. But yeah, this is what you do when you're up here. You just keep going, all right? <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I'll give her a ring later. But anyway, just everybody should know about Fiona Fox a lot, though. Let's put it that way. Uh, and yeah, and what I just want to do is, I see a lot of former colleagues. I want to welcome those as well, and friends of Jerry's. And I want to then just introduce the man who was going to actually launch the book. And it's Connor Brady. A well-known name in the journalist field in this uh, country of ours, been long associated with on Garda Sri Kavana. Actually, he told me just a few minutes ago that he wrote a history of the Garda on Garda Sri Kavana going back 50 years. Now he looks about 62. So he was a, he was, a, he, was a, he started writing in his in his youth, and it has been republished recently. He has written many many books over the years. He's also an academic. And he's been associated with the guards and a friend of the guards for, for many, many years. Many of you might remember him, the, the editor of uh, the Guard Review, even, going way back. Now, somebody told me about that because I was too young at the time to, to, to remember that. So, what I'd like to do is, I'd like to call on Connor now to come up and help to launch this book. Connor, please. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's a great honor and a great pleasure to be here. Um, I, uh, I recognize a lot of faces. Um, a few faces uh, uh, have a little bit less hair on top of them than they used to have, no more than myself, when I knew them first. Um, but it's good to see so many old friends here and to see so many of them well and active and um, making the paymaster general send out the pension every second Thursday, I think that's great. The longer, the longer you can do that, the better. Um, um, first of all, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge the location. Um, it's uh, probably, of all the buildings in Dublin that you could get, which was not actually a garden station, the Copper Jacks is probably the nearest thing you can get to it. Um, and I don't know if it's ever been officially designated as such, but uh, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, uh, on my own behalf and on Jerry's behalf uh, the cooperation and the appreciation uh, to, the, to, the, to the management here, uh, uh, and on behalf, obviously, of course, of the publishers, for making the facility available to us for this important launch. Um, that's a few words, that's about the place. So a few words about the man. Um, Jerry has already, I think, been very uh, well described by our master of ceremonies here this evening. He is an absolute gentleman, a pleasure to deal with professionally. Um, he is, uh, he has a, a distinguished career behind him as a senior officer in SDU and in other sections of the force. But I think he has found himself in a new plane, in a new level of operation, something that he has found in retirement from the job in the publication of this extraordinarily important and valuable book. I discovered something else about him recently. I've been dealing with him now for some time as we put the preparations in place for the um, for the, uh, for the for the for the launch, I was under the impression he was a Kerry man. Uh, I was put right on that today. I discovered that he's a West Cork man. <laughs> and being half West Cork myself, I have to say, Jerry, you rise even further in my estimation. <laughs> <laughs> um, to the 
look at self. Um, this is an extraordinarily valuable uh, narrative. Uh, it traces the evolution and the story of an institution which was central to this state. And I would go so far as to say that without the functioning of this institution, the guards, and in particular the guard of special branch, we might not have a state. Uh, and I believe that Jerry has tackled the big question here, the big questions, the existential questions, the survival of the state, the rule of law, the preservation of democracy, uh, in which the special branch played a central role. Uh, he has done it with extraordinary accuracy in the historic detail, but equally importantly, he has provided uh, a context, a political context, and a social context which is fair and dispassionate and honest. And it doesn't shy away from the thing, the times when things go wrong, things went wrong. And things did go wrong. And they will always go wrong in any great institution. They will go wrong, they will go off the rails. Uh, the author in this case doesn't shy away from it, he squares right up to it. He's in no way judgmental, but he doesn't he doesn't shy away from the facts. For that reason I think this is a work of extraordinary scholarly merit. I think it can stand it can stand scrutiny from any critic. And there will be critics, and there will be people who will who will take issue with this aspect of it or that aspect of it, right? I would think, uh, you know, I've not been short. I criticized myself in my years when I was editor of a newspaper. Um, but, you know, I often think of the words of Theodore Roosevelt when he talked about the critic, he said, uh, the critic is not the important one. The important one is the man who stands in the arena and he bears the heat of the day and he discharges the task. That's what the special branch did. That's what the special branch does. That is the story that Jerry has narrated and put it down here. And I would commend this book to everybody. Obviously, those of you uh, with involvement in the institution will want to read it. Those of us who are part of the wider Garda family, and I count myself in that because my father was a founding member, served more than 40 years in the job before he died while still serving. Um, I think for, for, for all of us, and for any student of the history of the Irish state, this is uh, essential reading. In saying that, I would like to compliment the publishers for taking it on. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I remember I was, I was saying to, uh, Hurley there, uh, to Jim Hurley earlier on, when I set off to write the first history of the guards uh, 50 years ago, I remember going into a very prestigious Dublin publishing house and telling the editor what I had in mind, and he looked at me and he said, the guards? You want to write about the guards? What was to say about the guards? They're there, that's all. <laughs> um, things have moved on along, a long, a long, long way since then. But I would like to compliment the publishers, Eastwood Publishers, uh, on their vision and on their support for this publication. And also, I would commend to you the list of their other publications. Just go onto their website. Uh, they specialise in in in, in detailed, um, if you like, byway issues of history, but things which are issues which are hugely important to communities and to people who want to get into the into the nitty gritty, into the into the granularity of, of our history. So my compliments to the publishers on that as well. Um, I would just like to say once again to Jerry, congratulations. You've done an amazing job. I'd like to say to his family, thank you for supporting him. Uh, I know myself, um, when you sit down to, um, to the screen at night or sit down at the keyboard at night, you do require the support of family, you require tolerance. You require tea or coffee or sometimes something stronger, um, and you require a good deal, a good deal of encouragement. And I, I know that you had that, uh, Jerry. And, uh, and it's wonderful to see your family here this evening in, in support of your, of your, of your, of your enterprise. Um, it, it, this is this is this is a I, 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 I think this is a book which will stand the test of time. It is meticulous in its detail. It is um, it is a, a, an exemplar in my view of the degree of fairness and, uh, and balance that one expects in a good work of history. It's not detached, it's not indifferent, it's not free of value, it shouldn't be. 
Uh, it, is, it is a book which narrates the story of men, there weren't very many women in the early days, uh, uh, of, 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 a, of a detachment of, of men, and latterly some women who, I, I would argue, as I said, saved the state as it is. I think if it weren't for the work done by the, yes, by the special branch, uh, I, I do think that we would probably be looking at a different situation in terms of the in terms of the, the operation of the state of the world. I say that in relation to the period covered by in Jerry's book, which is up to the end of really up to the end of World War II, into the 1940s. I believe that the same thing can be said in relation to the latter period of the Troubles. And in some ways I think the contribution and the sacrifice made by the members of Special Branch and the other security branches of the force from the 70s onward through to the uh, achievement of, of the peace process. In many ways, that contribution, I think, was probably greater than that of the men of 19, 1920s and the 1930s. And I have no hesitation in saying that were it not for the, these, these, these men standing in the breach, I think we might not be able to be as confident as we are today <clears throat> about the survival and the health of our democracy. So, on that note, I only have to say that, Jerry, I have one more job for you to do. I want you to go back home, and I want you to start writing the second volume <laughs> from 1947 onward, and we'll all be back here in two years' time. Thanks, Ian. Thanks uh, very much, Connor. Well said, and uh, you expressed the sentiments of a lot of people there this evening. And it's nice to acknowledge uh, that as well. I want to also mention that there are some relatives here this evening of members of the force who lost their lives during that period of time. And maybe for people who are not here with us this evening, who would like to be here this evening, can we just take about 30 seconds just to think about those? Okay, who wants to see Grandad up here? Put up your hands. Okay, let's say Grandad, get him up. Come on, Grandad. 